So the idea with my presentation here is to give an overview of um, wireless sensor uh, network technology for environmental monitoring and um, try to give some idea about uh, what it is, uh, how it is used today and uh, what the limitation and future challenges is to make this technology um, really um, available for the end user. Uh, and I will give some few examples from our own research in this topic, uh, but it will not be only our own work, so it's more like an introduction. So this is basically what I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, why could this wireless sensor network technology be interesting for environment monitoring? Uh, I will give some examples of um, real deployments where they have used uh, and we use the wireless sensor networks to monitor different parameters in the environment. And I will finish with uh, some of the technical challenges um, that we need to address uh, in future uh, research and development and what we are uh, working with now. So, uh, the, the main or overall um, uh, gener or general advantages with this technology for environmental monitoring what we are uh, addressing are the possibility to do to sensing over a large area. So we can uh, collect sensor information uh, from a very uh, uh, large area and um, with several points measuring different parameters. Uh, it should enable remote sensing, so we should not necessarily be in, at the site where the measurements are carried out. And uh, the operating time should be quite long. Uh, that's the target. I mean, one season to one year or several years without uh, maintenance of the system. So these are the things that sets the, 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 the constraints and the design goals for us. Okay, uh, I think some of the application areas already been mentioned, but I will just give you some idea where this technology can be used. Environmental surveillance, just observe what's happening, reporting in uh, sensor data, detecting, for example, natural or climate changes, I mean, long-term, slowly changing things. Also could be related to um, human activities like what's happening around power plants and uh, other infrastructure, big infrastructure constructions for communication or something like that. Uh, up until now, uh, wireless sensor network technology has mostly been used for, as a scientific instrument for researchers in biology or um, um, chemistry, interested in what's happening in the environment. So one of the first uh, wireless sensor networks deployed for this purpose was uh, monitoring birds' nests, what's happening there. Also, uh, uh, monitoring what's happening in in, um, in urban environments. It could be monitoring big constructions like bridges, buildings, dams, and so on to uh, have an early detection, uh, early warning system detecting uh, problems at the early stage and preventing catastrophes. Also for um, uh, in agriculture and forestry, uh, this is important to optimize the process. I mean, this is production plants more or less to to uh, to, to um, uh, make uh, the, the yield or, or outcome of, of the of the land uh, optimized. So these are some of ex some examples where large area sensing is ne needed and wireless. 
uh, sensor networks is, is, is a good technology then. If you look at some concrete examples what people have done, and uh, it's mostly academic work conducted at university as a research project. Um, this is one example uh, made at, uh, by a group uh, at Harvard University. They want to monitor in detail, more in detail, what previous ha previously has been done regarding uh, activities in volcanoes. And they have an area on the surface with uh, sensors observing um, uh, seismic activities. And they can use, for example, accelerometers. They use uh, microphones to, 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 for, for measuring the, uh, the sound outside the volcano. And the reason for having many sensors is that um, they, they could learn a lot more about the activities inside um, this volcano uh, since they, they can localize the, 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 the events and characterize it in a more detailed way. So basically, uh, the combination of the sensors in this area uh, is, is the parameter they are interested in, in, in measuring. Not a single sensor will give them uh, the, the, the data they need. So basically, it's the wireless sensors communicating with some uh, base station collecting the data. Another uh, example is uh, also from this uh, uh, of a scientific instrument where uh, it's uh, from um, University of Southampton and work by uh, Kirk Martinez measuring inside glaciers, interested in uh, getting more knowledge about what happens at the edge of the glacier movements and then how to model uh, this later because first you need to measure then you can create your model and they put uh, sensors detecting um, movements in the sediment below the, the glacier and then they have sensors in in the, the ice and measuring also movement parameters and um, temperature and pressure and these kind of things and they don't really know what to use the data for, but it's for modeling. So it's a scientific tool. So they have to drill and have a wireless communication network inside the ice. Then. Uh, uh, something uh, can call uh, precision agriculture is to uh, treat the, um, the, the the farmer look upon this land more like a production unit uh, uh, similar to, to a process industry where you have measure and then you can take action fast, like watering um, uh, and these kind of things. So this is a work uh, done in Italy where they get the 2D map, you can say, about uh, moisture, temperature and these kind of things in the soil on different levels. Uh, and then they can well understand the 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 the, 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 the land they are uh, they are using and um, uh, use watering more efficiently because water is in many parts of the world quite expensive so that is a important thing and of course optimize the harvest and this is the area where wireless sensor network technology is closest to commercialization because here there are some real uh, benefits uh, to, to, to do. Uh, another type of system is uh, um, alarm system for forest fires, also protecting valuable uh, forest and early detect and alarm when there is a fire um, started. So this is more like an event um, uh, detection system, so you only need to activate the sensor when it's um, when there's a fire uh, and we have in the ex exhibition um, solution from sensible solutions i think uh, that can show more about an example of this kind of system 
work we have done, uh, it's a uh, wireless sensor network deployment, uh, kind of initial study of uh, ground emission of CO2, because the microorganisms in the ground produce uh, CO2 gases. And uh, in this case, it was one part of the forest that, that were fertilized and one that was not fertilized. And it was interesting to measure and compare if there were any difference. Uh, so um, we had uh, eight nodes out and that we can monitor remotely. Um, uh, I think uh, we sample rate of, I don't know, five, every five minutes we measured all, all, all day, or for several days. So d doing this kind of long, long measurement ser data series, you can see things that you normally cannot do when you do manual uh, measurement, because you can see the, uh, the quite big uh, daily variation of the CO2 levels and so on. And it's also dependent on temperature, uh, air pressure and so on, atmospheric air pressure. One of the main advantages with wireless sensor network technology for, for environmental monitoring, it, it could provide a, more, a higher spatial resolution of our sensor data. So if you compare it to images, I mean, the more pixels you have in your uh, camera, the, the more detailed image you can get. And the same thing is for sensor information. If you want to have a detailed uh, picture of the local variations in the area, uh, the sensor network could be a solution then. And if you have low resolution, well, I mean, there are automated uh, measurement stations. This is a weather station that provides all the technology you need for remote sensing. It's, uh, you have solar cells, you have the instruments, and then you have uh, some uh, GSM or satellite communication that you can remotely observe. But this is just one point, and of course gives quite low spatial resolution. And sometimes that is, of course, sufficient. Uh, because this could this measure, these measurement values could represent um, the environment as a whole. But if you want a more detailed view of local variations, you need some other uh, technical platform to work with. And this is an example of uh, environmental monitoring in an urban area where we measure uh, temperature, I think, and then you can overlay a. Uh, 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 sensor information map onto the geographical map and can have a, another kind of image uh, of, the, of the situation. Temporary resolution, well, typically, uh, sample, these are kind of low, slow processes, so you don't need so high <coughs> sample rate. But this is one kind of system where you periodically gather data and like in the forest fire detection system, you want to just have, a, uh, op, uh, have an event detection where something special happens, then you start gathering data or you just alarm the single event that happened. Okay, if we look at the architecture for uh, wireless sensor networks, it could look something like this. There are uh, wireless sensors uh, that actually do a measurement, and there's kind of a comp computer network in small scale uh, that this uh, sensor can uh, propagate the data to some sink or gateway that could transfer it so to a data server so it becomes global available to the internet. There are many different ways to organize these kind of networks, but the important thing is that it shouldn't consume too much energy. Uh, so the idea is to, that this sensor network is a new infrastructure in place because the, the available infrastructure like mobile, network, uh, mobile telephone networks and um, like, or satellite communication will, uh, is not uh, a solution because it consumes too much energy and it's probably not uh, low cost, uh, sufficiently low cost solutions. So this is basic architecture, you have a local network for this sensor network, sensor nodes to communicate with. 
So in a, in a deployment, of course, there is this is just a uh, image, but if you want to survey the uh, water quality, uh, you have your sensor nodes that forms a, a network, and then data <coughs> is gathered at some point and then uh, transmitted to the data server, so we can remotely read the data. And of course, if we have a deployment uh, at a remote place, uh, we cannot have maintenance on the things. We, we, they have to be have a long lifetime. So energy, uh, there is no infrastructure we can rely on. So we have to um, see to that they have their proper energy supply uh, and also that they can, um, in a reliable way, communicate in this environment that could be very different from different kind of uh, situations we want to measure. So that is a challenge because we are putting now these instruments, the wireless sensor technology in new environments that we are not really used to. So uh, environment will play a big role when designing these kind of systems. And uh, when it comes to design issues uh, for wireless sensor networks, Energy supply is, of course, a problem. <coughs> uh, we can have battery operated, but we know that batteries um, <coughs> have a limited lifetime, but that is, of course, a solution, and we can replace batteries periodically. Um, uh, but uh, one can also think of uh, technologies for harvesting energy, to, to gather energy from the environment and, and trans. Um, convert it into electrical energy, energy that could supply the um, sensor electronics. Connectivity, the communication network, is another part of the infrastructure that we miss, and they have to have a, a special one. That, and the um, important design issue here is to have a reliable network that consumes very little energy. Normally, energy is, uh, communication requires quite a lot of energy compared to other things in such sensor node. So uh, um, that is quite important then. Uh, packaging is of important. Uh, you can have sensor networks in the water and so on. So this is, if you think about cost, this will be a major part of the total cost of the sensor node. On the sensor side, uh, not all sensor solutions are maybe suitable for, for outdoor operation today. And um, uh, we have aging problem, we have problem measuring water, we have biofilms on the sensors and so on. So there could be other techn uh, technical solution for, for doing a sensor that is more suitable for environmental monitoring. And also cost is an issue, because we want to have high spatial, spatial resolution, then we need many sensors. So cost will always be a, an issue. And calibration, if we don't want to have maintenance of the, our instrument out there, we have to, well, it's um, important that we, we don't need to manually calibrate the, the sensors. So uh, I was just thinking that I go into the energy supply problem. Okay, this is just an example of our wireless sensor node. You can see this is basically electronics with, with uh, the things for managing commu communication and, and sensing. In this case, we had solar, small solar panels for, for energy supply. And this is energy storage in a big capacitor. And yeah, the, the, the functions needed then is basically a radio for communication and microcontroller for handling the sensing and then the sensor itself plus the energy supply. If we look at the energy uh, supply, if we have a battery system, we basically have the energy storage that is a battery and then we have to regulate so we get the stable voltage and then we have the system load that is the microprocessor, the, the, the radio transceiver for communication, and the sensor itself. If we want to harvest energy from, from our environment, well, then we have an energy source. It could be wind, sun, 
whatever, convert it to electrical energy, energy and then have a charge management that charges this storage. Uh, it could be battery or a capacitor to, to, to harvest as much energy we can. So we can harvest energy from the environment in different ways. Here's uh, some examples, but uh, vibrations uh, can be used. Uh, you can use an electromagnetic uh, generator or pizza electrical generator. Temperature differences, if you have an interface, water, air, for example, or skin, air, uh, interface, we have temperature difference, we can uh, get energy from that. Uh, but so far, uh, solar energy, for most situations, is the uh, most appropriate, I would say, gives m most energy per cost unit or per um, volume <coughs> unit. There are other uh, IDs. This is uh, MIT that uh, managed to get energy out of a tree. There are some charge transport in the tree that can be used and it's not much energy but for a low power sensor it could be sufficient. There are quite low levels of uh, voltage levels 50 millivolt, but uh, they demonstrated uh, um, a wireless sensor powered by the tree, so there's no additional things. The problem with harvesting energy from our environment is that we, have, uh, we don't really know how much energy there is to harvest. Uh, I mean, if you think about sun or, um, energy, there's, of course, uh, we have a problem in North uh, where we have low solar irradiance compared to other parts of the world. So this, this is average over a year. So the average level is low, uh, but this goes also for vibration or any other energy you want to harvest. There's a big variation that we have to be aware of. You not have to know how much energy the environment can provide. So this is another example showing, illustrating the very big variation. We have both during the year and over the day, big variation, especially close to the poles. So this is from uh, campus here in Sundsvall. Uh, we have uh, done some experiment on harvesting uh, using s small solar cells to our wireless sensor. Uh, and we show that it's possible, even during the darkest period of, of, of the year here, uh, with a small solar cell, to provide the energy needed to do uh, uh, measurement of temperature and humidity. They are quite low power sensors. But anyway, it was possible to, to sense and communicate the sensor data. And we didn't use a battery, we used just a big capacitor, because battery in principle have a limited lifetime. Even if it's just lying on the shelf, not used, it will uh, have a reduced capacity. And also reduced number of uh, uh, charge and recycle uh, times. So we can just look at the upper graph here. So during daytime, we can take, take a point. It's charged and then then it's, uh, the energy is used up by the, sense, uh, the, 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 the sensing and communication things one day, and the next day comes and it's charged. And this is some dark days. This is the darkest period for 10 years here in Sundsvall, uh, and it's December 2005. And then we can see the voltage level that represents the energy level we have uh, stored and drops to a level that, well, the sensor is not working anymore. And then the, the thing is to hide how to dimension the system so it have an uptime big enough for our purposes. So I will just finish my talk with some conclusion. Uh, the technology uh, provides high special resolution measurement when that is needed in, in a um, in an area, remote sensing, uh, also this long time in situ measurement that we can actually measure in place over a long time period. 
interesting is the maturity of the technology. There are commercially available um, wireless sensor networks for agriculture, mainly for <coughs> winery. Uh, so, um, uh, but otherwise, there are quite little experience, real world experience of having a large scale wireless sensor network uh, and see how it behaves and uh, how reliable it is and so on. So here, further work must be need, is needed actually. Uh, for us as technology developers, uh, we have to deal with the situation we are moving our instruments into uh, environments without infrastructure for communication or energy supply. Sensor technology, um, there are possibilities in developing current sensors uh, or use other t technologies to, to make it more suitable for outdoor operation. Um, also, uh, have them more autonomous when it comes to calibration and so on. But there are many of the new technologies coming up uh, when it comes to sensors. MEMS-based sensors, also visual sensor, uh, can, can be used. Uh, and you have an example in the exhibition also over uh, these visual sensor networks. Okay. Thank you.